Well, it's May 24th, Victoria Day. In Canada, if you don't do any gardening on Victoria Day, you're not much of a Canadian. This is our traditional first day of, of summer right across the country, wherever possible people are out on this holiday starting their gardens. I'll just show you some of the things that I planted uh, Friday, Saturday, sometime over the weekend anyway. I'm trying to find some spaces to tuck in some of the brassicas that I have left over. I'm not really sure what this is because I used the uh, name tags when I planted the rest of the brassicas under the row cover over there. And uh, so the plants that are left under the light garden, I don't have any tags on them, so I'll have to grow bigger before I know what I've planted. In the square next to it, I've planted five uh, fennel plants. It's uh, Florence fennel. Finocchio de Firenze in, uh, in, in Italian that uh, produces that nice anise flavored bulb. I like it in salads, it's nice and crisp. And then next to that, I've put in five uh, Swiss chard. I think that's the last of the Swiss chard. I have another square of them under the spun bonded row cover. The beans haven't started to come up yet. Bush beans, but they haven't been there long enough. That cell on the end over there has some. Uh, of the French breakfast radish have started to come up, but not as well as I thought they would. Peas are continuing to do well. The uh, two peas that didn't come I replaced with seeds and they have both come up, so looking good in the pea department. The second row of peas that I planted last week are just coming through the soil. I don't know if you can see them or not. They don't show up too terribly well on, on camera. I also planted my cucumber plants over the weekend. Today I'm going to build a trellis for them to grow up. I have three different varieties in there. Uh, the lemon cucumber, I think I've only got one plant of that. The seed were quite old and that's all that germinated was one. I have a heritage variety called uh, White Wonder and another heritage variety called Boothby's Blonde. So, lots of cucumbers, hopefully. Well, the squash bed has been planted for three or four days now, and so far I haven't lost a single plant, and it uh, doesn't seem to be any slug damage or anything either. So, so far so good. Maybe it would be a good thing if some of them didn't make it. There's an awful lot of squash in this bed. One of my earlier videos, a week, ten days ago, I planted three containers of uh, potatoes for some very small red potatoes that had wintered in my basement and had grown long white sprouts a foot long. Well, over the weekend I've added, been able to add more soil to the containers and these it's amazing how much the uh, plants have, have grown and developed leaves in the short time that they've been out here. So, so far that's working pretty well. I'm not sure how well this will show up in this very bright sunlight, but this is a, a native viburnum. It's sold in the uh, you know, garden trade, but it's called uh, the Mohegan Wayfaring Bush. It has nice flat heads of white blossoms in the spring. I've had it for a number of years. It was about half that size, I suppose, when I bought it, but it seems to be very slow growing. Eventually, I guess its maximum height is six to eight feet, and this is probably at four foot right now. The uh, white blossoms are followed by red berries that I guess turn black later on in the fall. Well, the plants in the greenhouse are doing nicely. The tomatoes are probably doubled in size since I put them out here. I buried them as deep as I could bury them, and they've certainly doubled what was left on the surface anyway. And over the weekend, both of the uh, greenhouse cucumbers, the varieties called Carmen, germinated and come out. So as long as they're not attacked by one of these mysterious viruses that seems to kill these things in my greenhouse, they will continue to grow, and they grow very rapidly. So get strings up for them to find one soon. Over here is the red china eggplant. I think in one of my other videos I couldn't decide if that was a comment on communist China or if the, or if the eggplants are going to be red. Well, I did some internet research and the eggplants are going to be red. To me they look like tomatoes with flat bottoms. They're not very big. They compared them to those tiny um, ornamental pumpkins. Um, they, they look, like the, look like, like a lot like a tomato. Um, I don't know. They also said that they're bitter, so I can't think I'm going to enjoy them other than looking at them or not, but I'll have to look up some Asian recipes to use them, I guess. And the ground cherries are, I 
like I thought they might, are really enjoying the heat out here. They, they've doubled in size in a little bit of time they've been here, too. Well, that almost completes the four raised beds inside the rabbit fencing. There's another brassica planted there. If you're wondering why I say I don't know what these are, and there's a name tag in there with them, because the cells that I planted my free calendula seed in, nothing came up. Well, it came up in two cells, but two cells, not a thing, so I've left the calendula tag there to remind me in case something does come up. Next to it, I've planted a square of lettuce. My other square of lettuce is still under the row cover and doing well, and it was attacked a bit by something earlier, but seems to be leaving it alone now. And two squares of the flat-leaf Italian parsley. The row behind is the only row inside of the fencing here that isn't planted yet. And I'm saving that for rutabagas, turnips. Uh, my seed packet says not to plant them before mid-June. such a lovely day. I'm so tempted, but I guess I will wait. I want to put at least four squares of them inside the fencing. I'm going to try more outside, but I've got a feeling they might be a favorite of the bunny rabbits. I've taken the spun-bonded row cover off of this bed for the day anyway. I may put it back at night. I've left it attached on one side. I just can't stand it. I have to know what's going on underneath that white veil. I'm leaving it on the bed of brassicas. I don't know if take it off that yet. I'm scared of these moths, but I'll probably take it off that eventually, too. But I wanted to show you just how well the, the beets are doing. I'm so pleased. All the seed packets and gardening books say that you can't transplant them. And these things are transplanted beautifully, as far as I'm concerned. I did some more research on one of the heritage varieties, that one called Deacon Dan. And I don't think that the square, square foot gardening book is right on how many you can put in a cell. It says 16. The gardening book says that Deacon Dan grows an 8 inch, and I'm not sure if they meant an 8 inch diagonal across the top of a beet or an 8 inch circumference. Either way, it's a big beet. And I'm, I'm very interested in seeing what's happening to these uh, lettuce plants. I just transplanted both varieties in the, another bed there this morning. And the ones that are beautiful red here, when they're in the house under the lights, just have a little bit of red in them. I'll show you what I mean here behind me. See just a little bit of red on that. But they, after they've been outdoors for a few days, they turned completely red. Well, there's another square foot bed planted. Uh, eight tomato plants altogether, and in those eight tomato plants there are five varieties. I've decided not to build a, one of those tall trellises for the tomatoes. These are all indeterminates and would want to grow tall, but our season here just isn't long enough for that. I'll, they get up above these three-foot steel spiral things. I'll have to clip the top off them anyway so that we get some ripe tomatoes. And then I planted four each of the ground cherries and the cayenne chili peppers. I sort of staggered them, alternated them, rather than doing a row of each one. Well, it's grow cucumbers grow. You've got to go all the way to the top. <laughs> That's my cucumber trellis installed. The last one that I have to build this year, anyway. I have several large pots, and I've decided to fill them up with compost out of my own compost bin and plant the leftover vegetable seedlings in them. I just can't stand to throw them out. So this particular one has got one of the heirloom uh, tomato plants, a cayenne pepper, and uh, one parsley plant. And I've got several of these pots I'm going to do the same thing to. And I guess that's it for today. I'll talk to you some other day.